Hello summoners, my name is Kangas and welcome back to another episode of Pro Guide's Best Champions to Main. Now on patch 10.23. With all these crazy new items from the preseason, now is the perfect time to pick up a new champion to main. These champs are the most reliable picks in the game since they're unlikely to get nerfed in the near future due to their extremely low ban rate. Plus, they work well with new items and meta, so it's worth the investment. Before we start, let's cover today's question of the day. Who's your main and how long have you been playing them? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's get into this. Starting us off, we've got top lane. Most of the champions in this role can either abuse the new items extremely well, or they counter most of the champions that can. This means that you'll be able to stop the enemy top laner from snowballing out of control and become a team fighting machine later in the game. Wukong is overall an extremely powerful bruiser, and just like last season, he's going to be fairly strong if you're able to use him correctly. With all the new preseason items, Wukong is able to itemize in pretty powerful ways. Due to his unique kit, he's able to have insane teamfight potential, skirmish power, and overall be a pretty strong bully laner that you can dump hours into. Let's jump into his abilities real quick. Wukong's passive is pretty much just free armor. It's nothing too special, but it really shines when he's versus multiple enemies. Q is Wukong's bread and butter trading tool. It's pretty much just an empowered auto attack that offers extra range and damage. Plus, you can use it as an auto attack reset for those quick trades in lane. Due to the innate armor shred in this ability, you're able to hit pretty hard in lane even without any armor pen. Just remember to keep autoing minions to reduce your Q cooldown for more trades. Wukong's W is a mini dash that allows you to go invisible for a short time, as well as leaving a clone that will mimic your abilities. This ability is extremely powerful for juking enemies and doing extra damage plus extra CC with your ultimate. Keep in mind you can spam your stop key to make it look like you dropped your clone. This allows for some pretty cool outplays. As for a Z, this is your primary gap closer and deals some extra damage to multiple targets. Don't forget that this gives you attack speed when you use it, so be sure to use that to your advantage with your Q cooldown being reduced by basic attacks. Last, but definitely not least, we have the Monkey King Showdown. I mean his ultimate. Wukong's ultimate is not only powerful for dueling, but allows for some pretty disgusting teamfighting due to the immense amount of damage and CC it offers. Plus, due to being able to proc it twice and have your clone use it, you're pretty much just a speeding tornado wreaking havoc throughout the teamfight. Your damage is high enough to blow up squishies while also allowing you to shred through tanks. Just be sure to use your Q on tanky targets before ulting to make sure you have some armor shred applied. Next up, we've got Shen, who many classify as a tank, but due to his HP damage, he honestly feels more like a bruiser. Overall, Shen has extremely high dueling potential versus a lot of bruisers and provides a ton of support for his team. If needed, you can run Ignite to kill his laner, or just opt for the standard teleport summoner for some extra map presence. With the new preseason items, he is not only able to deal with the meta champions, but he is also extremely tanky. And if you thought that wasn't enough, he does pretty high damage too. It's also important to not ignore how powerful his ult can be. This champion can very quickly turn the tides of a team fight early on in the game or later on and can serve as a second tank support for his team due to his CC and his W. Let's quickly run through his abilities. Shen's passive offers a shield every time he casts an ability and his cooldown is reduced if he affects another champion. Shen's Q is his core trading tool and it not only gives him empowered basic attacks and synergizes with the shield incredibly well, but it also deals percentage max health damage with your autos. If you're able to drag your Q through someone, that max health damage significantly increases. Next up, we've got his most annoying ability to play against, his W. Shen's W allows him to basically have a stationary Jax E that his team can stand in. It's very strong in trades, and versus some champions, it can deny large portions of damage. Overall, it's a very nice way to avoid auto attacks and come out on top in trades, as well as protecting your team in teamfights. For his main gap closer and teamfight CC tool, we have his E. His E is a dash that taunts anyone in its path. This ability is pretty obnoxious to play against since he not only CCs you, but can force you to apply grievous wounds to yourself due to thorn mail. This ability is fairly strong in trades since you can taunt them, use your Q and W to avoid damage, yet deal a large amount of damage yourself in return. Plus, don't forget you can extend your taunt range by flashing. It's a pretty hard mechanic to master, but once you get it, it's really powerful. Finally, we have the ability that Shen is most known for, his ultimate. Shen's R is a global ultimate that provides a shield to an ally and teleports you to them if you don't get CC'd and if your ally doesn't die. This ability offers a ton of pressure around the map since people have to consider your ultimate whenever they want to fight. That being said, if someone doesn't think about your ult, nah, then you end up picking up some free kills nonetheless. Bringing us to an end in the top lane, we've got Poppy. When we said Shen countered the current top lane meta, it's definitely nothing compared to Poppy. Poppy is an extremely tanky champion that can utilize a ton of the new items 
to become an annoying laner and an even stronger frontliner. With her kit, she's not only able to slow down a top lane snowball, but she's also able to offer a ton of CC, utility, and even knock away multiple members during a teamfight. Overall, her damage is pretty decent, and her abilities make it really hard for people to deal with her. Her passive essentially lets her have a free-ranged auto since she throws her buckler from a decent distance in order to do damage. If you pick it off the floor, you get a max health shield as well, which is nice for fights. Just remember that this does proc on hit effects such as grass, so use that to your advantage. For her Q, she has a linear damaging ability that deals damage based on max HP. The ground that the ability hit will explode after one second, dealing the same damage again. This is just her basic damage ability. Poppy's W has two parts to it. The passive increases her total armor and magic resist by 10%, which is further increased to 20% when she falls below 40% HP. The active portion is great for dealing with champions like Riven, Jax, Fiora, and pretty much anybody with a dash. It gives Poppy 40% movement speed and surrounds her in an aura that, if enemies decide to use a dash in it, they'll be knocked up, take a small amount of magic damage, and become grounded and slowed by 25% for 2 seconds. Overall, this ability is a pain to deal with since it provides so much movement speed as well as removing key parts of many top laners' kits. Her E is pretty simple and is comparable to Vayne's Condemn. You charge at a target, and if there's a wall behind them, it deals additional damage, plus it stuns them. If there isn't a wall, this is pretty much just a gap closer or a CC tool. Now, Poppy's ultimate ability is one of the most unique ones in the game. She's able to charge up a massive hammer that increases knockback distance and range the longer it's charged. Whoever she hits, and it can be multiple people, will be sent flying towards their base. This ability is extremely powerful in teamfights, as it quite literally removes multiple members from the enemy team and gives you the numbers advantage. In small 1v1s, using your ultimate instantly is still fine, as it deals damage and CCs the enemy by knocking them up for a short period of time. Next up, we've got Jungle, which has slightly shifted towards a bit more of a farmy meta, but overall is pretty strong with skirmishers. That being said, a lot of these champions are amazing at not only helping their team out, but keeping themselves strong. First up, we've got the snowball rolling yeti himself, Nunu. This champion may seem strange to have as someone to main, but Nunu has consistently been played with a decent win rate and extremely low ban rate. Sure, he isn't as mechanically intensive as many other champions, but a good Nunu can run the map due to his quick clear times, insane ganks, and overall tankiness. With how fast-paced games are at the moment, he's able to keep up the pace and pressure all the lanes, as well as have some of the best objective control in the game. Let's quickly get into their abilities. Nunu's passive is fairly basic. It gives attack speed and movement speed to one nearby ally, as well as Nunu when he damages an enemy. Plus, it makes his autos cleave. His Q is one of the strongest jungling abilities in the game, and it's overall why his objective control and clear times are so good. Nunu takes a bite out of the enemy, which heals him, and if it's a monster, it does a significant amount of true damage instead. This makes taking dragons early extremely easy, as well as scuttles. Nunu's snowy bowling ball, I mean his W, is primarily used for ganks. Nunu ramps up a snowball that grows in size the further he builds it up. Once it reaches max range, he lets it roll for a bit on his own. Otherwise, he can crash it into somebody and knock them up immediately. This ability makes Nunu's ganks pretty hard to avoid if you're not under your turret, since he comes in extremely fast and the snowball is super hard to dodge since he can turn it. For his E, Nunu tosses snowballs at the enemy that slows them and he creates an aura around him. If enemies are in the aura when the ability ends, they are rooted and take additional magic damage. This ability is mostly used as follow-up to a snowball and pairs well with Phase Rush since the enemy won't be able to outrun you. Finally, we have Nunu's Ultimate, which isn't an amazing ability, but it's still fairly useful. Nunu's ultimate has pretty high base damage though, so don't think it's something to play with. Nunu charges up and creates a massive AoE zone that slows enemies that walk within it. Nunu can detonate his charge early to deal damage and shield himself, or he can decide to charge it all the way up. Enemies caught within this slow at the end of the duration take damage that scales on the charge time. Overall, this ability isn't that great, but in teamfights you can use it to zone enemies off of your carries and provide some CC for your team. Vi has always been a simple champion with a fairly basic goal, just gank lanes and ult to carry. She has really good clear and amazing ganks, as well as being very adaptable with her builds. Her passive is a shield that activates when you deal damage with your abilities. Her Q is a very basic linear skill shot that drags her with it. It's a bread and butter ability that allows her to engage and briefly knocks someone back. 
Her W is an Armor Shred ability that when stacked 3 times, removes 20% armor and grants her attack speed. This is really good for the jungle and helps you deal with a lot of champs later in the game. Vi's E is an auto attack reset that deals extra damage to an enemy on your next auto and empowers it to do damage to enemies behind them. This helps out with your clear and is mostly used for your combo later in the game. Finally, we have her ultimate, which is one of the hardest lockdown CC abilities in the entire game. Vi locks on and charges at an enemy. When she reaches them, she knocks them up and then deals additional damage. This, paired with her basic abilities, is usually enough to take out a squishy target early to mid game. The Spider Queen herself, Elise, is a classic jungler that has been around for years. Her kit still remains relatively simple, but through mastery of it, you can pull off some pretty nice moves, including flawless dives to get your laners ahead. She's extremely strong early and allows you to snowball your team, which works very well with how fast-paced games are nowadays. All of her abilities have two parts, Human and Spider Form. We'll be covering Human first and then Spider right after. Elise's passive grants her passive spiderlings when she uses abilities in human form, and also makes her attacks in spider form heal her. For her Q in human form, she spits a venomous attack that deals percentage current health, which is great for starting off your combo. Her spider form is an execute leap attack that does percent missing health, which is really good for ending combos, since it does additional damage if they're already low on HP. Her W sends out a spider filled with blood that blows up and deals magic damage to those around it. This ability follows her Q if you W in a different direction than Q a target in spider form. In spider form, her W provides attack speed and additional healing from her spiderlings. Elise's E is one of the most vital parts of her kit. In human form, she throws out a cocoon that stuns the first enemy hit, which is extremely useful for ganks due to the long range. In spider form, her E sends her up into the air for a brief moment, making her invulnerable. She can then target an enemy to land on afterwards. This is really powerful for dives or just disengaging fights. If you're really creative, you can use your spider E to jump on a minion, then turn human and throw your cocoon. Finally, Elise's ultimate, which isn't really an ultimate. This ability just allows Elise to transform between human and spider form, and it's accessible at level 1. Before we move on to mid lane, be sure to check us out at ProGuides.com. We offer coaching from top tier players and personalized bot reviews, as well as a ProGuides guarantee, where if you don't climb 5 divisions in 6 months, we'll give you an additional 6 months free. Next up, we got some pretty neat champions for all of you mid lane mains. These champions are really good at snowballing their leads and providing huge amounts of damage and CC in teamfights, as well as being able to deal with the current assassin meta. Overall, they're very well rounded with the new items and current meta, and will most likely not see many bans in the near future. Starting us off, we have Victor, who is a really fun control mage that can use the new items very well and has a new mechanic introduced to his kit with his Hextech core. His Q provides him with a small shield and an empowered basic attack. When evolved, he has movement speed when he casts it which makes it a very good kiting tool and overall it's just a good trading tool. His W is a small zoning field that if enemies stand in too long, they become stunned. When he evolves his W, it gives all of his abilities a small slow that again helps with kiting your enemies. Victor's E is probably his best ability as well as his bread and butter. This ability fires a laser from a fairly long range that can be used to harass early as well as decent wave clear. Once Victor evolves it, it gains a trail that explodes after the first cast. This makes it an instant wave clear tool that many Victors love. Finally, we have his ultimate, which summons a small AoE damaging ability that follows an enemy. It deals initial impact damage, then does damage per tick afterwards. Ari has always been a fan favorite in League of Legends. The champion has so many cool skins and even a pop star group surrounding her as the lead singer. She is a very versatile mid laner who serves as an assassin and a reliable mage. Overall, she's extremely fun, fairly safe, and can make some pretty flashy plays. Ari's passive gives her stacks whenever she hits an enemy with an ability. Once she has 9 stacks, her next ability will heal her per enemy hit, so it's best to use your Q on the entire minion wave when this is up. Her Q sends out an orb that deals magic damage, and on return, it deals the same damage, but as true damage. This is her bread and butter and is where the majority of her damage comes from. Ari's W recently got changed, and it now provides 40% movement speed when you cast it. Alongside this, it spawns three small flames that surround Ari and automatically target the closest champion in range. This ability is pretty basic and just does damage and gives movement speed. Now we have Ari's most key ability, her charm. This ability is not only strong because it provides CC, but it's what makes Ari hurt so much. When somebody is charmed with her E, they take an additional 20% damage from all of her abilities, and her W locks onto the target. 
Finally, we have her ultimate. This ability essentially gives Ari three flashes. She gains three charges of a dash that when used, send out energy bolts to the nearest target. This ability is best used for mobility rather than just flat damage. Diana is another beast of a mid laner that is known for her crazy 1v5 ultimates that just absolutely sweep team fights. She's a cool champion that is seen at even the highest levels of play and is definitely a champion you can dump hours into. Her passive gives her attack speed that is significantly increased when she uses an ability. She also gains stacks per auto and every third auto she will cleave nearby enemies and deals additional magic damage. Diana's Q is fairly unique. It sends out a skill shot in a counterclockwise arc that deals damage to all enemies hit and it applies Moonlight, which we'll talk about more in a second. Her W is pretty basic. She gains a shield and spawns three orbs that orbit her. If all three orbs pop, she gains another shield. As for her E, this ability is what makes Diana such an assassin. It provides her with a strong gap close ability that does okay damage, but the biggest part of it is that enemies that got hit with her Q allow for her to E once without putting it on cooldown. That's pretty nuts, since that means she can Q a minion, then dash to it, and then dash to you. And then, if you flash, she can dash yet again to finish you off. Finally, we have Diana's ultimate team fighting ability, which pulls in enemies and after one second, deals a large amount of damage in a big AoE that scales with how many champions you pulled in. This ability can easily 1v5 a team fight and turn the tides in your favor. With the new items, AD carries finally have a bit more control over their games, since they can now properly itemize every type of item without setting themselves too far behind. With this in mind, a few AD carries stand out that can really take advantage of how fast-paced the game is, as well as how they can scale with the new items. Starting off, we have Miss Fortune. This champion was one of the top tier AD carries for quite a while last season, and for good reason. She's extremely easy to play, has high movement speed for catching waves, and her damage is pretty nuts. Alongside this, she's able to take short trades very well and can 1v5 a team fight with her disgusting ult damage. Let's get started with her passive. This is essentially a CS helping tool that does additional damage the first time you auto an enemy. It's a pretty decent chunk of damage and you can abuse it later on by constantly switching targets to keep procking it. Her Q is basically an auto attack reset and the important part of it is that you can bounce behind the target to deal damage. However, if the target is killed by her Q, then the person behind it takes an incredible amount of additional damage. It's a pretty basic ability, but it's very key to her kit. MFSW is extremely underrated by a lot of players. It provides a ton of passive movement speed which allows you to quickly roam to catch waves or just get back to lane. When you activate it, you also gain some attack speed, which is always nice. Her E is an AoE slow that is primarily used for disengage or to set up her ultimate. When someone looks at you funny or you need to slow the enemy down, this is the ability for that. Finally, we have yet another team fight changing ultimate. MF's ultimate is extremely powerful, and as previously stated, if you pair it with your E, you're going to be hitting the enemy for most of the duration. Just make sure you're not somewhere that can be easily interrupted. Next up, we've got Jin, who is honestly one of the most unique champions in the entirety of League of Legends. His high damage allows him to constantly be a threat to the enemy, especially since he scales extremely hard, and then you can't ignore how much utility he provides for his team. Overall, he's a pretty well-rounded champion that is fairly mobile at mid to late game, as well as decently safe in lane. Jin's passive makes it so that he can only have four shots, and he attacks with a set attack speed that scales with level, as well as giving him movement speed every time he crits. Additionally, his fourth shot deals additional missing health damage, and then he has to reload after. He also turns crit and attack speed into additional AD, which is pretty nice this season. Jin's Q is his main trading ability. It's a grenade that bounces through minions and deals additional damage per bounce. This damage is further amplified if the minion died along the way. For his W, he has a very long range shot that deals decent damage and roots enemies that have been dealt damage by either him or his allies. Jin's E is a trap that when stepped on, takes a few seconds to explode. It's not really used for damage, but is amazing as a ward or for slowing down ganks. Finally, we have his ultimate, which is also another unique ability. Jin opens up a very wide range that allows him to shoot four shots from a massive range. The first three shots do nice damage, but the fourth shot deals additional missing health damage. Overall, this ability is great for picking off people or just dealing long range damage. 
Kaisa is a really good AD carry for dealing with assassins, as well as being a pretty nice assassin herself. She's able to be extremely versatile with her builds, and with her evolves, she can protect herself. Alongside this, her passive allows her to shred tanks incredibly quickly. We'll be looking at her abilities, as well as her evolved abilities. Her passive is a 5 stacking passive. You gain 1 stack for auto attack, and once you reach all 5, you deal additional magic damage. Allies that CC enemies also grant 1 stack. Kaisa's Q fires missiles around her that deal additional damage to targets with missing HP. This ability is not targeted, so be sure to isolate it when you can. Her evolved Q grants her additional missiles, which significantly increases her damage and adds wave clear to her kit. Her W is a long-range missile that deals additional damage based off of how many stacks of her passive that the enemy has. This is extremely powerful in your early game trades if you're able to land it with almost max stacks of your passive. When evolved, it deals even more damage, and you get cooldown refunded whenever you hit a target. For Kaisa Z, she gains movement speed as she winds up, and once completed, she gains attack speed. Once it's evolved, she also gains invisibility when during her windup, which is extremely useful for dodging assassins. Finally, we have her ultimate ability. This ability is what allows you to kite very hard because you gain a shield as well as allowing you to dive the enemy backline and quickly follow up on your team's engage. Supports at the moment are a bit rough, but overall, their main purpose is still the same. They're here to keep your teams alive, specifically your AD carry. These supports are extremely good at disengaging and providing high levels of heal. First up, we've got Bard. This slightly goes against what we've just said, but Bard is very strong in lane and is able to impact the map due to how mobile he is. Alongside this, he's able to make extremely crazy plays with his kit. Bard's passive allows him to collect meeps around the map. They give him a stack, movement speed, mana, as well as experience. Collecting enough meeps grants him additional benefits such as slows, damage, and additional meeps that empower his basic attacks. His Q is a short-range damage ability that slows, and if it hits multiple enemies or a wall, it will stun the target. This is a nice chunk of damage for lane. Bard's W is essentially a small med pack. He's able to spawn three at a time, and after a few seconds, they become empowered and heal for additional HP. They also grant movement speed, which is useful occasionally. His E is a magic tunnel that allows your team to go through walls. There's nothing special to it, but it's overall a really strong ability for playmaking and ganking. Finally, we have his ultimate, which is a long-range AoE Zonias. This ability can be game-changing, as you can stall objectives, stall team fights, and make picks around the map if you see someone alone. Zillion has been seeing a lot of play around mid lane, but he's still a fairly strong support. Especially now that assassins are being played mid and jungle, his peel and ultimate ability are extremely useful. Zillion's passive allows him to collect experience and level someone up once he reaches a certain amount. For his Q, he tosses a bomb that deals damage after it explodes. If he stacks two bombs on top of each other, it becomes an AoE stun. Next for Zillion's W, we have an ability that just reduces all of his other basic cooldowns by 10 seconds. This allows him to cast multiple Qs and Es at once. For his E, he's able to slow enemies or speed up his allies, which is extremely useful for peeling later in the game. Finally, we have the main reason you choose Zillion, his ultimate. Zillion will place a protective aura around one champion. If they die before the aura runs out, they will respawn. This is such a good ultimate versus assassins, as it allows your team to catch up while your teammate revives. Janna is yet another amazing support for just absolutely pissing off assassins and peeling for your team. Her passive grants allies walking towards her additional movement speed, as well as granting her extra damage on her autos based off of her movement speed. Janna's Q summons a tornado that goes in a straight line. Janna can charge the tornado for 3 seconds, and it gains travel distance and damage based on how long she charged it. This ability is a very good CC ability that can zone off enemies and disengage fights. Her W is her primary lane bully tool. It provides her additional movement speed while it's not on cooldown. This does quite a bit of damage early game, which helps her become a lane bully. Janna's E is her main enchanter-esque ability. It provides a shield to an ally and grants some additional attack damage based on her AP. This ability cooldown is reduced whenever she CCs somebody. Finally, we have Janna's Ultimate, which is one of the strongest disengaged tools in the game. This ability knocks all enemies away from Janna's location and heals her allies within the circle. This tool is not only good for stopping engages and assassins, it's also really good for laning phase. If you lose a bad trade, Janna can just heal you back up to full HP. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. We hope you guys enjoyed and hopefully found a new champ to main with this new patch. 
Nonetheless, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. And as always, good luck on the rift, stay hydrated, and wash your hands.